You, you just uh, gave a, a, a keynote about uh, the German crowdfunding market. Uh, can you share some more insights about how is crowdfunding uh, now active in, in Germany? Yeah, we have around 70 platforms um, and there's really a really diverse market. We have highly specialized platforms on movie crowdfunding or sports. And then we have a uh, equity uh, space, which is quite dynamic as well. Um, has around 40 million euros and then we have a big lending uh, market as well. Crowd lending is actually the biggest part of that market with around 150 million euros. So and it's all growing really quickly. Um, the whole market is doubling every three months. So it's really interesting how, how quick this goes. Yeah. And you also mentioned the, the, the discussion about the, the, the terms of crowdfunding and crowd investing. You said, okay, we're going to split it. Uh, uh, so you say, okay, donation and pre-sales is crowdfunding and uh, debt and equity is, is, is crowd investing. Uh, why? You know, in, in German, uh, crowdfunding would be presented as Schwarmfinanzierung, but nobody, it's not sexy. <laughs> and so, so that's why the Germans all use the English terms. But then we make up our own uh, terms. For instance, crowd investing is being used to, to discuss equity-based crowdfunding for startups and, and bigger companies and lending-based crowdfunding. So we just, we just use it. I don't know how it, how it came along, but it was just simply that um, uh, this was grouped together and then the more the reward based pre selling donation based was grouped together and but people confuse it all the time so they talk about crowdfunding crowd financing and so on but it's normal you know the the industry is evolving and so do the terms yeah yeah, yeah I think it's good because you also got quite some difference uh, bios from investors uh, yeah. when they're donating and, and or, or really investing yeah I mean the, the motivation is obviously quite different you know when you do reward based crowdfunding on platforms like Indiegogo or Kickstarter or Start Next or Vision Bake or something, then your motivation is to really support a certain project and you don't care so much about what you get back, um, uh, although it's nice to get something back. But when you do crowd investing, you think about your long-term financial prospects as well. So that's why we split these up into two yeah. things. Yeah. And what does your crowdfunding network exactly do? Um, the main task of the network is lobbying and uh, educating the public and the poli politicians about crowdfunding, explaining the different models, and then try to find a reasonable way how we can regulate the market without destroying the innovative dynamic of this. You know, that's really not so easy because even small changes sometimes can have a huge impact on the platforms, making certain things very, very much expensive. Yeah, and, and you also said, okay, if you want to go on crowdfunding, don't start a crowd for the platform, but just made the links between the existing companies. Uh, uh, what do you want to, 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 to say with that? So um, I think when a public body, like a, like a city or a region, when they say, um, we would like to support crowdfunding, but we don't know how, then sometimes they have this idea that they start their own platform and then make crowdfunding really cheap but at the same time, I think it's not really that innovative. You know, the, the city governments should try to help the whole market, should try to help all the platforms that are out there. And uh, rather than creating their own infrastructure, helping making connections between the old industry um, and these new dynamic industries. You know, that's because that the, any city mayor, he has so many connections to industry people and other so why doesn't he educate people about crowdfunding that's what i yeah, would yeah. suggest yeah good thing and when you look at, at uh, which barriers has to have to be removed to make crowdfunding and crowd investing a sustainable model on the future uh, uh, what are the biggest barriers uh, you're dealing uh, with uh, right now um i think the biggest one is that not that many people know crowdfunding and they're a little bit skeptic because they just see a crowdfunding as a way to beg for money and it's not or to get money really easily but it's much more than that it's market research it's uh, marketing mobilizing of people so this is uh, um, important to keep in mind so the second barrier is I think payments in, in Germany you have to you have only a couple of payment providers like PayPal and um, what we actually need is a payment provider that understands how crowdfunding works so this is something and then the third and, one and, is... And, yeah. and, and uh, what does a payment provider ha has to change to, to, to adapt to crowdfunding? Um, well, the payment providers mostly work on the e-commerce space. So they, they, they see it that 
here's a product and here's a payment and both is exchanged. But in crowdfunding, the payment comes first and then the product goes there. So a payment provider needs to make sure that this works really smoothly and it's really very difficult, in fact, in the reality. And the third obstacle I would say is that um, we would like to see more and more creative people using crowdfunding and I think there's a little bit of people are afraid of being exposed too much or tell too much about their idea and we just have to educate them and say look this is a really great way to attract your target group and talk to people and get feedback yeah, yeah. and you also said that, okay crowdfunding is not about financing but when you look especially at the program today there when you uh, but also when you look at the, the figures uh, the, the the crowd investing uh, part is, is growing much 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 faster than than the, the crowdfunding part aren't you afraid that the crowd investing part will will be so big that the crowdfunding part will just disappear also in the attention of the policy makers? Mm, I, I don't think so. No, I think it, there's, there's, there's space for all of these uh, things. It's just uh, the money raised in the equity space is, is much bigger and the projects are bigger, but simply because the crowd is also part of the entrepreneurial process and, and, and participates in if the company is successful. So, so this. I really see um, that what, what is really taking off, there's so many new platforms coming up and they also have all their, find their own little niche. And this is something I find really interesting that uh, even though you have large players like the American platforms, or that there's still a huge amount of, of uh, innovation in this, in this field. So that's, that's something I think is really cool. And you can see this in Germany, in Netherlands, in Europe. The biggest thing is though that um, all these debates are really local right now. So it's good that we have a crowdsourcing week here where we discuss things which are across border. You know, you want to have people investing in, um, uh, you want to have a Dutch startup going to maybe to a British platform and attracting investors from Denmark or Germany. That would be the ideal way to, to promote crowdfunding, really European crowdfunding. And, well, and what was the main message you want to, to share with the audience uh, today in your talk? Ooh. I think the, the, the main issue that I'm trying to say is that um, it's not all about regulation this and, and it's, the regulation is important but whatever you do around this in promoting crowdfunding is as important as how you're going to regulate the market. So cities and uh, regional governments and national governments have a really good way of, of uh, um, promoting crowdfunding and they should do this actively. So that was sort of my idea. And if you, uh, they shouldn't just promote a few platforms, but they should try to really develop a really, uh, an industry of consultants, universities, platforms, projects, incubators, the, it all, mm -hmm. it's part of the crowd industry. Yeah, so they really have to facilitate uh, growing an ecosystem where all stakeholders are involved. Mm, yeah. Yeah, okay. okay, great, cool. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you.